Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to see how to use Wireshark to detect suspicious activity on our network, specifically ARP related attacks like ARP request storm and ARP poisoning. Let's dive into it. First, let's get Wireshark ready for the task. We need to configure it to detect ARP request storms. To do this, head over to the Edit Preference tab. Select protocols, then find ARP. Now enable the option that says detect ARP request storms. What this does is alert us if someone is trying to map all the devices on the network by sending a large number of ARP requests. This is one of the common way attackers gather information about a network. Once this is enabled, Firesack will notify us if it detects any ARP storms. Now let's click OK and start our capture. Now, let's switch over to our Kali machine and use NetDiscover to scan the network. Now, let's switch over to our Kali machine and use NetDiscover to scan the network. We are not going to perform an ARP poisoning attack just yet, but simply discover all the connected devices using the same command as before NetDiscover I at zero range in my case 192 168 23.1 and hit enter then disco has completed the scan and it found all the devices on our network now let's go back to our site to see what's happening before we check for notification let's analyze the packet generated by the scan we can see there is a device identified by its source IP broadcasting to the entire network it's asking question like who has this IP and tell this IP this is essentially net discover in action trying to map every possible IP on the network and asking them to report back to the source which in this case is the machine with IP 192.168.73.189 so we can easily deduce that someone on the network is attempting to identify all the connected devices. Now let's check for any alerts. If we go to analyze and select expert information, you will see that Firesack has flagged an ARP packet storm. This tells us that a simple device is sending a large number of ARP requests, most likely trying to gather information about the connected devices. This is a clear indication of suspicious behavior. Now let's perform an ARP poisoning attack and see if Wireshark pick it up. I am going to execute attack using better gap in my Kali machine. Once the attack is in progress, let's head back to Wireshark and analyze the results. Look at this, Wireshark has flagged another issue, a warning about a duplicate IP address. This tells us that our router's IP address is now associated with the two different MAC addresses, meaning someone is tampering with our AIP table. This is the result of an ARP poisoning attack, where the attacker positioned himself between the router and the target device to intercept communication. So, how can we protect ourselves against ARP poisoning? One way is to use static ARP tables. Let me show you how we can. Let me show you what I mean. Open terminal and enter ARP A. You can configure each IP address manually to map it. You can configure each IP address manually to its corresponding MAC addresses. In this case, when you set your AIP table to be static, any attempts to change it, like an ARP poisoning attack, will be blocked by the system. The downside is that in large networks, managing static AIP tables is an impractical, but in smaller setups, like a home or a small office network, this method could be highly effective in preventing ARP poisoning attack. And that's how you can use Wireshark to detect suspicious activity on networks, including ARP request storms and ARP poisoning attacks. We have also discussed how you can defend against these attacks using static ARP tables. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.